Hello, and welcome to the second edition of our COVID-19 dialogue series organized by the International Network of People Who Use Drugs and the Global Commission on Drug Policy. My name is Jay Gagliata, and I'm the Policy and Communications Officer with INPUD. And I have the pleasure of introducing today Luis Biel Vincent, Director of the Urban Survivors Union in the United States, and Luis Arbor, member of the Global Commission on Drug Policy. Thank you both for being here today. Luis Vincent, the floor is yours to ask your first question. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, we are very concerned here in the United States um, about all of the things that are happening with people that use drugs at methadone centers, and we are going to get opioid treatment medication. Um, there is no social distancing. Do you have any thoughts on this, um, on policies that we could, we could implement or how we can better protect people that use drugs, their health, their dignity, their safety? Yes, uh, good to talk to you, Louise. For the first time, I think, ever, the whole world is attuned and concerned with health type issues. That's the good news because it means for the first time, I think we have at least some hope of mobilizing people to care in a much less judgmental way than before. What you've um, uh, mentioned though is, what do we do in the shorter term? What do we do tomorrow for people who are enormously at risk? And you can imagine it's even worse for people who are uh, incarcerated. Yes, so we've had years of people who use drugs dying of overdose um, and, and, not, and, and without the mobilization required. And now we have um, people dying in prisons and, and I'm so worried about that and I would love to hear, hear your thoughts. Well, you know, this is another area where <laughs> bizarrely we may see good things happening, maybe not for the right reasons. For instance, we may see a lot of people released from incarceration uh, just because the authorities are going to fear losing control over the pandemic in these severely overpopulated prisons. Certainly in Canada, there's a movement to advocate for the early release of some people who are incarcerated. And for the most part, it's going to be so-called drug offenders because they're typically numerous and nonviolent. So I think a lot of the relief could come from court decisions who may actually force governments to ease the overcrowding, and that could lead to the release of many people who are currently uh, incarcerated as a result of these ridiculous minimum sentences, very overly severe uh, punishment for laws that in the first place are not exactly just and fair. So I think there was a little bit more sympathy in public opinion. And now with the pandemic, I think we need, need to capitalize on that. I'm in the U.S. South. Um, we are beginning to go back to business as usual. How do we make sure we don't waste this enormous, this enormous opportunity for change? The question of public health has never been more at the center of government's preoccupation, along with the economy, but that's not hard to get their attention on the economy. They're always there. But on public health issues, it's been traditionally, I think, very hard. Now we have government's attention, but I would say as much as drug use and so on is a global issue, it's also very much a local issue. Yes. And I think if we could make a lot of progress with people like you locally, with the local authorities, municipalities, communities, I think the real change is likely to come from people like you. And of course, any support that we could give you know, will be there. Um, I have one last, I have one last question. Sometimes we feel disconnected here in the U.S. and that may be our own, <laughs> that may be our own um, disconnection, um, but sometimes we feel disconnected and we don't know how to engage um, and make sure that we are utilizing the global effort. Um, do you have any thoughts? It's very hard because of course, you know, smaller countries, uh, they have to reach out internationally because there's not that much going on. But in the U.S. you have these networks you know, across the country. So I can understand how everything else must feel very far away. Uh, I think what we're doing today is an example of certainly the effort that we want to make. You know us now, spread the word. You know, there are people all over the world working on that issue, trying to move it forward very much in the same way as you're doing, but through different channels. Thank you so much. I think that was absolutely what we need. Um, there is beauty and community and 
the amount of community resilience we're seeing right now and the desire to fight back and the desire to demand more has never been more than now. And so I appreciate that comment. I think it will, I think it will resonate with the people that we work with. Wonderful. And yeah, as someone from the US myself, I really appreciate that response too. So thank you both so much for your time and to everyone else for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and see you next time.